Lewis Hamilton headed into the 2024 Formula One season full of optimism. But after a difficult first four races with the troublesome Mercedes W15, he now describes this as the worst start to a campaign he's ever had. Considering Hamilton is now in his 18th season, that's a big claim, but it's one that holds water given the results and problems with the car that have turned the expectations after what appeared to be a promising preseason on their head. The Japanese GP was another disappointment for Hamilton and his fans. At this point, it doesn't even come as a surprise. The Silver Arrows, led by Toto Wolff, have been struggling since the bitter loss in 2021. Moreover, the Japanese GP exposed Mercedes's flaws, with both Hamilton and George Russell severely suffering with their steering. After sounding positive about improvements to the W15 following Saturday's qualifying session, Hamilton started the race from P7 on the grid, two places ahead of Russell. When the event was red flagged, following a first lap collision between Alex Albon and Daniel Ricciardo, both Mercedes cars swapped their tire strategies to the hard compound. Statistically, this is the worst start to a Formula One season he has had in terms of results. Hamilton hasn't qualified higher than eighth, while the retirement with a loss of oil pressure in Melbourne means he has scored only eight points, for seventh in Bahrain and ninth in Saudi Arabia. This is the first time Hamilton has ever failed to claim a top six finish across the first three races, and only the second time he hasn't had at least one podium result in that period. In Bahrain, Hamilton was unable to make progress as both Mercedes drivers had to reduce their pace to manage cooling issues. In Saudi Arabia, he stayed out under the safety car as Mercedes split its strategy and avoided a double stack pit stop. This turned eighth place in the early stages to ninth, thanks to having to make his pit stop under green flag conditions later in the race. Hamilton described his race pace in Australia as okay, but not special, but he had laid the foundations for a good result. According to Hamilton, his W15 suffered damage in a minor collision with Ferrari's Charles Leclerc, which rendered his steering wheel nearly useless, but just enough to get him through the race. Moreover, their lack of pace compared to Ferrari and McLaren didn't do them any favors. Consequently, the team result was the same as their starting positions, P7 and P9. This brought out Hamilton's suppressed frustration with the team. The car is never what I hoped it would be. It's never what we hoped it would be. I got some damage I think in the first stint at the restart, with Charles and I had massive understeer. Like huge, huge understeer. So that's why I decided to let George buy, because he seemed quicker and I just couldn't turn the car. It took us two stints to finally dial more and more wing in to make up for that loss. Last stint, I was better, but it was too late. I had 10 seconds to regain. In terms of whether he can take many positives from the weekend at Suzuka, he added, I don't know if you can take many positives from the weekend. The car finished, which is good, but we're like, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth fastest, so yeah. On average single lap pace, the Mercedes is only the fifth quickest car so far in 2024. But while that means it is therefore competing in the bottom half of the top 10, Hamilton has also struggled more than Russell. The feeling in the early stages of the season was that big steps had been made in terms of the rear end stability that was a weakness last year. The last time Hamilton won a race was September 5th, 2021. Putting that into perspective, the man he is replacing at Ferrari, Carlos Sainz has won three races in that period. That doesn't portray a beautiful picture of the Mercedes star and his talents, but the source of this unflattering comparison can be traced back to the Brackley outfit's complete and utter failure to understand and do well within the 2022 regulations. Wolf has already seen enough to write off his team's chances of a title challenge, and he is certain that Max Verstappen is going to stroll unchallenged to a fourth straight driver's championship success. Verstappen's points total looks slightly less impressive due to his retirement from the Australian Grand Prix two weeks ago, but the manner of his victory in Japan, which saw him finish 20 seconds clear of signs in third, led Wolf to the conclusion that no one will challenge him for the title. If your expectation is to eventually race for wins and championships, then you can say we are in a bit of no man's land. No one is going to catch Max this season. His driving and the car are just spectacular. I can see how he manages the tires. Basically, this season now is best of the rest. That's the fight. That's all. Hopefully, we can catch up to the McLarens and to the Ferraris and fight for P2. This is what it is this year and what it was last year. And we were P2 last year. 
But asked whether Mercedes will have to wait until 2026 and the new regulations to challenge Red Bull, Wolf said he hopes that is not the case, as he doesn't want another 18 months of suffering. We are in this bunch, but it is not satisfying for any team that is fighting for P2 and P3, or P4. If I was to look from a purely sporting point of view, P1 is what matters. Our ambition is to win races this year, and I wouldn't want to let that ambition go, certainly not next year. But 2026, there's a big reset which certainly provides the most realistic opportunity for any other team to beat Red Bull. But there are one and three quarter seasons before that, and I don't want to go through much more suffering in the next, whatever it is, 18 months. I just hope for highlights and a trajectory that's going upward. There's still plenty of time to make gains with the car, and Hamilton does have a tendency to get stronger after the early races, as he adapts the car to his needs. Although the chances of doing anything more than perhaps fighting for a podium finish, even on a good day in 2024, seem remote. The big question is whether Mercedes can get on top of these problems quickly enough to make improvements to allow Hamilton to turn his worst start to a season into a fitting farewell to the team he's enjoyed so much success with. Mercedes has modified the car this year, only this has not yet brought any major improvements in terms of performance. Wolf is therefore frustrated that the car is not much faster. With the rear tires in the rear and the front, I think that the car is so complex for us where we put it in terms of the error balance and mechanical balance, and these two need to correlate. We've followed a certain trajectory over the last years and keep turning and circling. At some point, Mercedes found a different way, but it is not yet panning out great, Wolf agrees. And we came to a point to say, okay, we got to do something different here because we are measuring downforce with our sensors and pressure taps. And it's saying as we have 70 points more downforce in a particular corner in Melbourne than we had last year. But on the lap time, it's not a km put h faster, so it doesn't make any sense. So where is the limitation? And I think we wanted to pick some few boxes. Is there any limitation that we spotted? And I think there is. So there is downforce in the Mercedes car, but it does not correlate. That's exactly what I'm saying. Everything over these two years, which we have seen points to, that there should be much downforce than we believe it is. And now we've measured the downforce and it's there, we're just not able to extract the lap time out of it that we should. And that simulation show us, and it's not trivial. You know, like, I see you looking at me like, what the hell? Now imagine what we think. Has Hamilton pulled off a repeat of his perfectly timed first change of teams from McLaren to Mercedes 11 years ago, which turned then one-time world champion into a record equaling holder of seven titles? While that is much too early to call on the evidence of the first four races of 2024, Hamilton's decision to leave Mercedes for Ferrari is hard to fault.